official stats. Hey everyone, welcome back to Nelson Official and um today we are going to enter chapter eight um which is so much fun because we are four chapters away before we gonna finish the gameplay series. Um before that I have some exciting news although probably not for you, it's for me. Um yeah, I got so many games recently that I'm busy with and my day schedule is pretty much full and I can pretty much spend my time with my things, with all of my things so much this time because it's holiday, I don't have any homework or anything so yeah, that's great. So, this is the last screen that we stopped by and uh, let's go to uh, race skill. I haven't raised my skill uh, since chapter, it was chapter 2 I believe, the last time I was, I mean the end of chapter 2 before I enter chapter 3, that was the last uh, time I um, upgrade my skills. So, let's go with this. Once again, you have gained the potential to heighten skills if you choose to do so. Yes, I do, sir. Here are your current skills. Athletics, 3. Adept close combat weapons, 4. Advanced cooking, 3. Adept crafting, 4. Advanced driving, 4. Advanced electronics, 4. Advanced empathy, 1. Basic hand-to-hand -hand combat, 1. Basic intimidation, 3. Adept leadership, 5. Superior medicine, 4. Advanced persuasion, 3. Adept range weapons, 4. Advanced scavenging, 3. Adept search, 2. Beginner stealth, 4. Advanced survival, 4. Advanced... So, those are my stats, my uh, skills level. I don't have science. Untrained skills. Science. Yeah, I don't have science skills. Um. Anyway, let's. You have five remaining skill points. Okay, so let's see. I have five left. So, what we're gonna do is. Athletic, athletic three costs four to raise. Let me see what else I can. Uh, I I can I can use for. Um. Maybe search. Search two costs three to raise. Cause search. I ha only have two right now. So let's gonna make. It, uh, I'm going to make it three. Pick the group option sixteen of nineteen. Next button, zombie exodus. Okay, Same so payment. your search skill has been raised from two to three. I already uh, raised this um the search and then the second one I do believe I'm gonna make empathy because empathy is quite important too. So yeah, this is um I I only have two skill points left since empathy have one. Uh, I I only have one point in empathy. So, I'm gonna use it. I uh, use these two skill points to upgrade it to level two. Where's that thing? Ah, there you go. So I'm gonna mix. Right. So this is the confirmation screen. Do you accept your new skill levels, or do you wish to revert to your previous skills and select new improvements? Yes, I want to... I just want to move forward. I accept the new skill levels. Yeah, Radio I do check. accept it. Next button. So, let's see. From the exodus. Just before breakfast is served, Brody calls out from the edge of camp. We have people coming up the hill. Oh, wait. Is this not chapter 8? Wait, what? Everyone in the clearing reacts to the warning. Brody and Rachel reach for firearms. The clip. Just more options. Button. Okay, okay. I'm a little bit confused right now. So... Is this chapter 8 or not? I don't know. We're gonna see. If this is not chapter 8, then where's chapter 8? Strange. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I... Oh, okay. I must have been confused. Okay, 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 okay. Right, supposedly that 18 minutes video yesterday was not the end of chapter 7. Okay, okay, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Okay, so probably um, this chapter, this maybe this is the end of chapter seven. I do believe that. I do believe so. Okay, um, because this is the end of chapter seven. Probably no. I'm gonna make separate video for that. Okay, so um, probably today will it will be only two videos. I do believe in the next video we're gonna use. Uh, I mean. I'm going to make only chapter 8 because chapter 8 is quite short 
I don't know. Let, let me see if this is the end of chapter eight, uh, 7. I do believe so. Just before breakfast is served, Brody calls out from the edge of camp. We have people coming up the hill. Alright, okay, there's people coming up, uh, up the hill. So, okay, I'm gonna spoil it to you actually. These people are Silverton Malaysia, which is another survival group that we need to worry uh, worry about because we're gonna visit them at chapter 12. And uh, yeah, they are quite violent, so we have to choose our um, action here properly. If not, one of us will be will be taken as ho uh, hostage or a prisoner or something like that so let's gonna do it everyone in the clearing reacts to the warning Rosie and Rachel reach for firearms the twins rush with excitement to the top of the path while Parker throws blankets over some of your group's supplies Rosie and Driver take Rachel's kill and draw weapons Dante hides behind the tree and holds a hand behind his back concealing something Church eyes the hill bringing the ends of his hand in his hands okay 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 what I'm going to do actually here is I'm going to keep the guard up to um deflank them I'm trying to Use the suppressor, um, suppressor, what they call that, suppressor firearms, like you know, machine gun, something like that. It's Kelly and a few other strangers. Brody shouts as he stares down the hill. Okay. Rising through the forest comes Kelly leading a team of four a woman and three men. Alarmed, their pistols are holstered and rifles slung over their shoulders. They walk oh, with confidence whoa. and friendly smiles and have already made it halfway up the hill. Whoa. You have only a minute or so while they ascend the path to prepare. Okay. Primary weapon, Springfield rifle, secondary weapon, cavalry sword. Um. Though I'm going to change my Springfield to AK-47, I guess. I reconsider. My I reconsider. Let's Next reconsider. I'm going to bring payment. along. More options. Button. Okay, I'm going to bring along two range weapon this time, but my primary is AK, while my secondary is Springfield rifle. Use point point at at baseball bat at at forty seven. Option 2 of 27, at 47 assault rifle. There we go. Gonna next. Next, and a backup weapon. Yeah, backup weapon, I'm gonna use my Tactical shotgun. Springfield. Springfield M9, Springfield M1903, bolt action rifle, radio button not checked. Six, the group, option 24 of 27. There we go, let's next take button. it. You have a scope available. I'm, okay, okay, we have a scope. I'm gonna use it on my AK-47. I place it on my AK-47, radio button checked. Next button, current armor worn, football pass. Yes, I'm gonna make my uh, armor. I'm gonna keep my armor. I wear my football pass. Radio button checked. I, no armor for now. I wear. Next button, you keep on your football pass. Current helmet worn. Football helmet. I wear my football helmet. I, no helmet for now. Radio button not checked. I'm gonna take my football helmet. Next button. Okay. So, so let me introduce my new friends. Kelly, you keep on your football helmet. Okay. So let me introduce my new friends. Kelly says, "This is Natalie, Keith, Benson, and Wyatt." Okay. This is uh, one of the. Uh, one of the group that uh, one of another survivor group that we need to worry about because they are violent and things like that. You will know why when I show you. Good morning, he says. He carries a wooden crate filled with fresh vegetables, which he places on the ground to remove his camouflage hat. He stands a half a foot taller than Kelly and has the physique of an Olympic swimmer, lean and muscled with the sharpness of his features. And though civilization is a weakened Armageddon, his clothes are neat and clean, and his face perfectly shaved. Sorry to pop it unannounced. Okay. Something smells good, Natalie says. Her voice high pitched, almost squeaky. Like Keith, she wears an army green t shirt, denim jeans, and hiking boots, but she finishes the look with thick rimmed glasses and ebony colored hair and a ponytail. Also, like Keith, she places a crate of food on the ground. Okay. Basically, you're inviting yourself to these people's breakfast. Kid the root. Wyatt chuckles, making his large belly jiggle. He wears overalls over a tall, immense body, and if it wasn't for Jane, he'd be the tallest in camp by far. He lowers a double bag by the two crates of food. Okay. Last into the clearing, Benson takes a spot to the side, where the twins are sitting, and even staring at him. You almost forget he's there. He's average in height and weight, hair like old straw, and he has a slight hunch and a slouching posture. His eyes sag as he gazes around camp, and he chews on the warm plastic straw. To say you'll be uneasy about Benson is an understatement. The way he's gazing at your group members reminds you of how zombies stare at the living. Uh-huh. I did offer breakfast, Kelly says. Keith and his group saved me on the highway. I was trying to lead a rabbit I spotted when three infected popped out of the forest. They took care of the zombies, and we started talking. They're running a camp farther up the highway, and even offered us some supplies. Look, fresh produce. Whoa. Rachel shoots you a glance from a few feet away, and her expression is a mixture of anger and confusion. Okay. She walks over to you and sighs. I can't believe she invited these people into our camp. James makes his way over as well. They look like good people, but this still worries me. Just a bad feeling. James scans camp as he speaks. We need to keep our guard up, Rachel says. This could be a ploy to rob us, or worse. James rolls his eyes. Okay, slow down. I know we've been at this for a week, but we can't act all paranoid. They could be here to help. We can't assume anything about them based on fear. Right, Nelson? We need to treat them as guests. Maybe they'll want to join us, or our two groups can work together. Radio button checked. No way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cooperate with these people. You will know why when I continue the story. Anyway, I'm going to make a god up prep preparation like Rachel suggested. Um though I might show you other options. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. They brought us supplies and did help Kelly. Radio button not checked. Benefit of the doubt, no way. Let's I'm worried too, but we should show them hospitality. They've done nothing to earn our distrust. Radio button not checked. 
Hospitality. Not quite. If if not a good strangers, I'm not gonna show them hospitality. I'm worried too. Let's keep our guard up. Like Rachel said, but invite them to breakfast. And wait, we can learn more about them. Radio button got checked. Yeah, I'm gonna invite. I'm gonna. Okay, actually, it's not a big concern to let them have a breakfast, but we should keep our guard up. Ex at least. Six. The group. Option four of eight. Let's do it. Let I don't feel good about them being here. Let's get some of our fighters to hang in the woods and be ready for trouble. Radio button not checked. I can choose this option too, actually. Hang our fighters in woods. Six. The group. Option five of eight. Probably this is the best option. I don't feel good about them being here. It's safer if they go. Let's get rid of them as soon as possible. Radio button not checked. Get rid of them, but if you don't have preparation, they will overwhelm you. No I, if they have all of these supplies, we should find out the location of their camp and how many people they have. And wait, we can rob them. Radio button not checked. Whoa, I don't want to be a robber. I might don't help strangers, but I don't I don't like to be like a robber. No. If I say we find out where their camp is located, so we can rob it and then kill all of them. Radio button not checked. Oh, rob it and kill them. Wow, this is a great violin. Uh, next button. But seems fun, I guess. But uh, we're gonna just go I, next. Next button, you read my mind. I will go. Rachel says, Dante and Lopez, you're with me. Yeah, those two are uh, kind of great fighter too. James Rugs, that's fine. I still think we're making a lot of assumptions about them. We should try to get to know them. No way. You assuming people are innocent, but kind of not quite. Rachel nods. At this point, we have no choice but to treat everyone as a potential enemy until we know more. I wish it weren't so. She stares around camp with your would-be guests as she speaks. I see Keith is coming over to speak to us. I imagine you want to talk to our leader. I will stay nearby and keep watch. Yeah. James looks over at Wyatt near the main campfire where food is cooking. Maybe Nelson should speak to him. I'm not much of a talker. Besides, I want to go see what their big man is up to. Okay. As Rachel and Jane walk off, Keith strides up. He slides the strap of his rifle slick farther over his shoulder and puts his hands in the pockets of his jeans. Hey, I'm sure you weren't expecting people to invade your camp so early in the morning. We just wanted to make sure Kelly made it here safe. We'll head out soon. Also, I wanted to meet whoever's in charge. Whoever in charge? Keith leans back and forth like a tree swaying in the wind. He's staring at Kelly, and you can tell by the way he's watching her that he might have an interest in the woman beyond what he's letting on. I'm surprised you're still wearing your uniform, Keith says. Some of these moron looters running around town were taking shots at me when I was geared up. Thought I was gonna arrest them. I lost my cami right after that. Whatever. I'm still a soldier, and a few trigger happy civilians won't change that. Radio button checked. Mm, I'm still a soldier, and a few trigger civilians won't change that. I, I didn't know civilians were shooting at us like that. Radio button not checked. Mm -hmm. I, I like wearing it. Radio button not checked. I, this isn't my uniform. I took it off of a dead soldier. I don't want them thinking I'm real military. Radio button not checked. A dead soldier. Next, next button. We can also lie to him, actually. Let's. Why not? Keith makes a face like there's a bad smell in the air. Okay, then. Uh-huh. I guess you don't approve. Don't approve. To wear it, you have to earn it. But it's not a Marine's uniform, so whatever. Stolen valor doesn't really count. He scratches the side of his cheek and moves his hands to his hips. Like I said, we'll be out of your hair soon. We wanted to introduce ourselves and let you know you don't have to worry about us. Okay. Thank you for helping Kelly. Your group is welcome to join us for breakfast. Radio button checked. Mm, I can say that one. Funny choice of words, I say. His words sound like a veiled threat. Radio button not checked. Funny choice of word. You're not worried. Radio button not checked. Sorry for the doggy sound. I don't know. This background is kind of bad, man. There's so many mosquitoes around here. I don't like it though. You're not worried. Radio button not checked. You know, cause I'm I'm not at home right now. I'm at my neighbor neighbor's home at uh, ups, upside upside of my village. Um. I will go down soon, probably around an hour or two from now, but I, I hate being here, you know, too many mosquitoes around here. You're not worried. Not only mosquitoes, but the background sounds and, you know, surroundings, ambience are pretty bad. I don't like it here. How that Kelly is back, it's best you all head out. Radio button not checked. Okay, tell them to head out is, you no know, quite a threatening. I... Glad to meet you too. Why don't you tell me more about your group? Radio button not checked. Uh, let's just say have a funny choice of words. Funny choice of words, I say. the group, option two of five. Okay. I I guess I already showed you the other option, so let's go next. It's words. Just the way I talk. I didn't mean anything by it. If a bunch of strangers rolled up in my camp, I'd be suspicious. Mm-hmm. He walks forward, turns, and faces the center of camp, standing beside you, looking out as you are. He takes his hands off his hips and crosses his arms in front of him. You see, it's only been a week, but it's been a hard week. We and a few others were marines together up in California, and happened to be home on leave when this all went down. We tried to keep our people safe, but things went south fast. Law enforcement and the National Guard were overwhelmed quickly, and those who lasted gave up fighting for the rest of us. We had to take matters into our own hands. Yeah. You want to get rid of Keith as fast as possible, but he seems intent to stay in chat. Okay, whatever. What type of camp are you in? Radio button checked. 
Okay, I okay I can ask him a few questions or I can skip. Because of this one is the uh is closer to chapter eight. I'm gonna make this video maybe a little bit longer by asking a few questions. And by asking the f these few questions, you will learn why this group is not good at all. So I'm gonna first ask what type of camp are you in? Next button, it takes a stone away from his foot, and the top rolls a good five yards away. FEMA came and set up an area right on the outskirts of our town near I-70. Apparently, it was an area easier to secure than Denver or Colorado Springs. They set up, but had far less military support than a place like that requires. We went there for supplies, but when we saw they were being overrun, me and my group took over. Okay. Overrun by the infected? No, I live in people. They were coming in and taking supplies, causing trouble. It was chaos. My team was armed, so we assumed control. Shut that place down tight. Not everyone from FEMA agreed with us, but at that stage, they'd been cut off from the government. Okay. Talking to Keith, an image pops into your mind of them standing across Sapphire Lake, watching your group through binoculars. Whoa. What happened to the FEMA workers after you took over radio button checked? What happened to FEMA's worker after you take after you take over? You said you tried to keep your people safe. Did you lose anyone? Radio. Let me see. Next button. Keith turns his head to cough. A few of them left. Others stayed and joined us. He pauses. Others. Well, they objected and had to go. Okay. Well. You raise an eyebrow. Had to go. We killed him. He says. It's not even like he just told you about the weather. Whoa. You just kill people and you just like and you know. None, no emotion or something. Why did James both build out a roar of laughter near the campfire? Okay. Keep smiles. Looks like those two are getting along. Yeah, pretty. You said you tried to keep your people safe. Did you lose anyone? Radio button checked. Yeah, did you lose anyone while you trying to save everyone if you can? I mean, civilians and people around you? Next button, Keith blows out alongside. Sure did. Quite a few. A lot of the weaker ones, you know, the women and children. Some of the men couldn't hack it, so they died. Kind of glad they did. In those first few days, our numbers thinned, but the strongest survived. Yeah, of course. Wait, you just say they are weak? Okay, that's kind of one of the insulting for me, at least. He speaks like he's recalling a shopping list, flat and forth, even though he's talking about the deaths of dozens of people. Hmm, like a shopping list. Your eyes fall on Natalie, who is standing near Daniel. The two are talking and laughing, and she crouches next to him and shows him a tattoo on her forearm. Okay. What do you do for the Marines? Radio button checked. I can ask what you do. What do you do for the Marine? Let's go. Next button. Keith perks up with a question. I was a rifleman. My wife was a machine gunner. Written over there was an infantry assaultman. Natalie was army intelligence, which I always considered an oxymoron. All of us grew up in Silverthorne, though we had different career paths. Strange how the outbreak brought us together. Okay, these all. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. So these four people is kind of a soldier. Okay, okay, okay. These. Okay. Now, okay. Now I just get a new information from here. So apparently, Keith. And uh, his guys is kind of are kind of um, a military forces before the outbreak. Okay, but another way, I am much experienced than they are, so probably this will not be a problem. Kids scans the camp. You really need to get out of this place. Not good for these people. You got an old woman and kids to worry about. Uh huh. Where's your camp? Radio button checked. I can ask him where you came, but that might sound suspicious. Where, how many people are in your group? Radio button not checked. Okay, I can I can do it all I can do it all day. Let's ask him where's the camp first, and I can ask how many people they have. Next button about ten miles farther north. It says pointing the hand. It's almost a straight shot up the highway. Straight shot at the highway, ten miles away. Okay. What were you doing around here then? Seems random. Uh huh. In some ways, it was random. A team of us went out to scavenge and find survivors. We know there are some businesses and houses around here, even in really remote places. Benson said there's a junkyard at the gas station on the old map of the area. If living people are there, they want to join our growing safe haven. Okay. Benson hasn't moved since the four newcomers arrived. His gaze lingers on the twins, and he finally says something to Madison, which has Brody's hand, walk over, and talk to him. Okay. Keith turns to face you. One of the reasons I came up here was to talk to all of you and figure out if you're the kind of people who would do well with us. In the short time I've been here and observed you, I've come to realize that you're survivors and would fit in well with the Silverthorn militia. You know what it takes to stay alive and prosper in this new world. I'm sorry, but I don't want to say I I don't want to go with you. I don't want. I mean, I don't want to join your silver the militia. There's no point. He adjusts his stance to lean into you and speak in a more passionate tone, like an attorney making his closing argument. You see, when it all started, I thought we could keep it all deposits, searching for the word civilized, and let the people die in suffering. We try to do the moral good, and we deluded, or someone would wind up dying. We take in a family only to find out one of their kids was infected, and once she turned, we lose ten more of us. It didn't take long for me and my friends to realize we had to adapt. We had to be strong, decisive, and aggressive. We had to become predators. Once we acted on that new agenda, our people felt safer and knew we could keep it that way for the long haul. Okay. He stares at the ground and shuffles his feet before making eye contact again. His expression solemn. Now, it wasn't easy. We've had to do things things we wouldn't have been proud of a few weeks ago. We've had to kill, take what we need from others, even torture. People have wants and needs, and when civilization falls, the pressure of survival turns people savage. But times, we've acted on those instincts, and done things many might find unsavory. I can't say there's a right and wrong anymore. There are no 
more heroes or villains. Those concepts fail with society. Yes, this is why I say this group is not good at all. As you can see what he's trying to... I mean, at first, I already know what's the point of this conversation. I mean, I already know what what type of... I mean, what type of group they have at first. I mean, when I played for first time, I thought... Okay, um, okay, just, okay, just slow down. They just, okay, they just torture people for their need or anything like that, but... When I understand the meaning of the word torture and kill and die and things like that, I just I just cannot accept it. So when I was the first time I played this game was um, I do believe about a year ago, I guess a year or yeah, just a year and a half or uh, yeah, just in that period of time, but. Uh, at that time, I don't really understand English, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't really understand English. I always up to Malay, uh, Malay and Indonesian. Um, but now, when I understand every meaning of these things, every meaning of um, uh, these things, I mean, an uh, English word in this story, I start to learn that this silver toy Malaysia is kind of a, a bad group, a kind of a robber, you know. Their name is Malaysia, it's Silverton Malaysia, which means kind of an army and something like that. But they are, you know, torturer and, you know, not good at all. Some of our group didn't see eye to eye with this way of thinking, so they had to go first. We consider it a kindness. We spared the innocent from a life of anguish. We could have turned them outside to the dangers of the outbreak, but instead we gave them mercy. Others in our group accepted the reality and moved on. They accepted the fundamental truth that they are too weak to survive on their own, but strong enough to work within our rule of law. Some of us, like Benton, well, he seemed to relish the new ways more than the old. He took to the new order quickly, like a dog who was forced to be domesticated, now let loose in the wild. Benton was born into this world years before it began. Yeah, so... Yeah, that, that's how it done. I've said a lot. I ramble and I turn on my salesmanship. What do you think? You ready to join us? No, I am not going to join you. As Keith pauses, you consider how you feel about what he's been saying. Okay. What roles would we have in the Silver Thorn Militia radio button checked? I can ask what roles? What, what happens to us if we choose not to join radio button not checked? What happens? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so start from this point, we need to be cautious. I mean, every single word that we say will affect the gameplay later. So, let me see. Let, let me see. Let me choose wisely here. What? Willing to take all of us, radio button not checked. Willing to take all of us. I can't be part of a group that tortures, robs, and kills. Radio button not checked. Robs, kills, torture. I cannot be that part of group. Initially, I thought my group is kind of that too. I mean, my, my group is kind of a torturer, robbers, killers, and things like that too. But when I truly understand them, I mean, the, the whole point of the story and I... I can understand English better right now. I just realized that my group is not that kind of bad. I mean, they are bad, but not that kind of bad. They just, you know, they just um, scavenge things. They just um, kill infected and maybe some human if uh, they are resistant against us. Against us. Um, but yeah, this Silverton Malaysia is surely not a good people. I can't be part of a group that tortures, robs. I have to discuss all of this with my group. Radio button not checked. I have to discuss. I do believe if if I choose discuss, my group won't agree. But from my personal opinion, my character will not agree. Or uh, my character will not agree that with that either. I have to discuss all of this with my group. I appreciate the offer, but we'll pass. We can survive on our own. Radio button not checked. No. If we, I say we can survive on our own. This is not a correct word actually because if we say we can survive on our own then Keith he will just create some you know uh, um I don't know how to say it, probably a room not a rumors kind of you know hostage and things like that then he will make him he, he will try to create a misunderstanding uh, between our group uh, means that we are not his enemy, but he considers us as his enemy. So, yeah, that, that will be the problem if I say I want to survive on my own. I will join your group. I have no choice but to agree, even though I don't want to. Radio button not checked. I don't have a choice. No, I do have choice. We'll, we'll join your group. I truly want to join the Silverthorn Militia. Radio button not checked. No way. We'll, next button. No way, I don't want to join. But now, 
what's the matter to de 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 to deny his offer let me see um those dogs are just noisy and keep disturbing my concentration okay um let's just let's just say i have to discuss all this with my group i i don't i i believe that he won't hurt us let's just go next button pm stairs around the campsite blankly and quietly that makes sense take 24 hours to talk to your group and make a decision you should explain to your people what the silver thorn militia is about and what we can do for them explain the consequences too okay 24 hours hmm you give us just a short time 24 hours huh we'll see we'll see we'll see We'll just see. The consequences? Yeah, you know, the consequences. Pete stares at you, stone faced. You heard of the old adage, you're either with us or against us. Okay. Now you are trying to threat me. Okay. I'm not. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna take cover anymore. Are you threatening us, you say, turning to face him, and you're going? I'm, I'm not going. I'm not. Okay, I'm not going to. Uh, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to stay quiet anymore. You know, I have a short fuse. I I mean, I have a. I just chose um short fuse as my challenge. One of my challenges. So if you try to threat me, no way, no way. Keep size. Call it a threat if you want. If your people don't join, then my people will see all of you as either opportunities or threats. It's a matter of time before you have what they want. Either you'll kill us or we'll kill you. There's just more of us, and we don't give a crap what we have to do to win. Okay, whatever. Now you're trying to. Okay, now you are trying to declare war. Is am I right? Some shouting starts from the far end of the camp. Looking over, you see Brody standing a few yards from Benton, who has a pistol pointed at the young man's chest. Oh, okay, okay, this is getting violent. Okay, so this drama will start right now, which is uh, a small battle against um, Silverthorne Malaysia. You don't talk to my sister like that. Brody yells, not back in town. Okay, it's all about medicine. Whoa, what's going on? Jamie yells and takes a step towards Benton. Stay back. Benton shouts, a sudden twang to his voice. I will fire. Whoa, okay, this is great. James stops, hands raised defensively. Put that weapon down, man. What the hell? Everything happens fast after that, and before you and Pete can cross camp to the fire, the two groups are in a standoff. Okay, okay, okay. You better put that gun down, Riley says, holding his pistol level to Benton's head from a few feet away. Okay. Everyone, please. It doesn't have to be like this, Church says, hands up like he's lagging down the truck. Hey, you, don't interfere, Church. These Church people don't like fighting. Yeah, he, you know, he, 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 he does not like fighting, but most of our group are kind of fighter like that, so they are grown angry of this. Wyatt has a shotgun aimed at Riley's back, while Natalie is focusing the barrel of a rifle on Daniel. Standing behind the tree, Rachel is aiming for some machine gun at Wyatt. Whoa, 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 okay, the, our nephew is in danger. I will kill all of you, I swear. Rosie shrieks, waving for some machine gun around. Whoa, submachine gun. What is this all about? He calls out. Everyone jumps at his mark, and the hand falls to the holster on his belt. Okay. That pervert kept staring at me, Madison says, indicating Benton. I told him to stop, and he told me to mind my mouth. Madison says, imitating the man's call. Okay. These kids run their mouths too damn much, Benton says, still with a slight smile. As the two sides hold in the standoff, you order my group to lower their weapons. We can't risk a firefight. Radio button checked. Mm, okay, we still have time to react to the attack. No, I'm going to stand my ground and fight. You, are peop you people just came here and just caused violence in our camp. No way. I'm going to just start the fight. Oh, demand the silver lower their weapons. Radio button not checked. I can demand them to lower their weapon, but no. I'm going to stand my ground. You are just four. We have twenty of us. Overpower Keith and use his life as leverage to gain control of the situation. Radio button not checked. I can overpower Keith, but I have tried this option several times, but it won't going to work. Oh, sneak back into the woods. Radio button not checked. I can sneak back to the woods. Convince all sides that this was a misunderstanding. Radio button not checked. I can convince them this is all a misunderstanding. Call out to my group in the woods. The aim with the silver thorns. I will tell our intruders how outgunned they are. Radio button not checked. I can okay. I can tell all the um, fighters in the woods to aim the gun. Call, wait for James to take charge and get us out of this mess. Radio button not checked. No, I'm not going to wait for James because James is kind of a person who don't like fighting too. But I, you know, this fighting is kind of it's ex exciting actually. Attack first. Surely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to attack first. Or oh, I can say that, uh, tell all the people in the woods to aim the gun. Let me see. Okay. 
let's just prepare because if we don't prepare we won't win let me see Next button, take a few steps forward and call out to the silver swords. All of you, lower your weapons. You're completely surrounded. I have members of my group aiming weapons at you right now. Okay, everyone, just relax. Pete says, this way's even and composed. We didn't come here for a fight. Okay. You stand near Keith, wary of the man despite his words that defuse the situation. Okay. Tell your people to lower their weapons. James shouts from the center of camp. Hold your horses. I was getting to that. Pete says, now, the four of us quiet. Benton, Natalie, and me are going to leave your camp. I said my piece to you, Nelson. No need for bloodshed. Silver swords, we're out of here. You watch them cross your camp, following their movements, ready to react to anything change. For now, it looks like things have calmed down, and your group might get out of this without a scratch. All of your companions, Bailey, Madison, Rosie, Driver, Tina, Jillian, Parker, Rosie, Tommy, James look on with a range of emotions from fear to relief. Some have weapons still raised, while others stand still and watch, making no movements like even a subtle gesture might provoke violence. Okay. As the Silverthorns start down the hill out of the right side, James strikes to the east side of camp. Everyone, we're safe now. Everybody relax. The drama is over. Okay, so, okay, 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 okay. I made a wrong decision, apparently. Okay, okay, okay. That, but that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Whatever we gonna we got, we gonna get rid of them in chapter twelve in the last part. Okay, we'll see. Next button. Let's go. Zombie exit. Show a short while later. He was in the middle of camp, still reeling over the events of this morning. Your group sits around you, everyone quietly thinking. Not sure how much more of this I can take. Riley says. He takes a sharp stick into the side of a stone, piling the edge like he's fashioning a shiv. Okay. His mother reaches out and takes his hand. Rosie chuckles in that way people do when they're about to say something depressing. When times were tough at school, I'd say the world's against me. Now, I can say it and mean it. Mantle sits next to you, his head in his hands, looking at the sky in the distance like he's pondering the fate of the world. He just might be. I'm so sorry, Kelly says through tears. This is my fault. I brought those people here. If you want me to go. No. It's not your fault, Kelly, James says. I have a feeling the silver thorns were coming, no matter what. Madison kneels near the dead fire. It's ever cold and black. What do we do now? Should we take whatever we can and go? al has got a point, Woody says. Where do we go? We're not just lost, we're lost. Tommy places a hand on Madison's shoulder. Charlie walks over and lies at your feet. You look at him, and he returns your gaze. If you all want to go, I'll follow, Lopez says. If you stay, I stay. I'm not lost. I'm home now. Rachel sits atop a wooden crate, her body slumped. I should have known of these silver thorns. I could have scouted more and identified threats. James turns to her. How could you have known about them, or any other threat? How is that on you? Rachel pauses for a long, somber moment. I'm not who you think I am. Next button. Okay. So, yeah. Rachel, next button. About ten years ago, I started working for your government, the CIA sort of a joint program with British intelligence. I'm sure some of you suspected something fishy was going on with me. I was trained as part of a group to perform counterintelligence, learn black ops sort of things. I was trained to deal with survival situations, to adapt, to carry on. Okay, so you kind of a spy like that, apparently. Yeah, I know it from the first. So, you're like a spy? Oh, yes. Or an assassin, Madison says, her face lighting up. Rachel laughs, but it quickly fades. Not quite. I did kill bad people, some truly evil, but my role turned to recruitment and behavioral analysis. How to identify people who had talents we've abused. I wanted to form a team to survive the outbreak. It was all of you, or at least, I chose some of you. In the end, I feel like I'm failing. Okay. How did you fail? Why are the bad things that happened your fault? James says. Yeah, if you failed, what about the rest of us? Riley asks. We're all a bunch of losers then. I ain't no loser. You can't be so hard on the airsoft, Woody says. We're all in this much together. No amount of preparation can overcome the odds we've been up against. Without you, Rachel, I think we'd all be dead already. Madison tilts her head down, and she can't see her brother smiling at her. Rachel runs her fingers through her hair, nervously. If I had acted faster, recognized the threat sooner, pushed a little harder, I wouldn't have failed. You interrupt Rachel. You didn't fail, Rachel. You're still alive. Radio button checked. Okay, I can give some inspired speech here. You, you should have told us your secrets when we started this journey together. Radio button not checked. You should have told your secret. No, everyone have a right to hide their secrets, you know. You, we all have our secrets and reasons to keep them. Radio button not checked. Yeah, I can say so, but no, I'm going to just... You didn't fail, Rachel. You're still alive. Yeah, you didn't fail. You should, you, you, we, it will take time to earn our trust again. Radio button not checked. It will take time to earn our trust. Mm, no, you are you are one of the group members too. You did your best, Rachel, and we know you'll continue to do so. Radio button not checked. You did your best. You, if you keep secrets from us anymore, you're out of this group. Radio button not checked. Whoa, not gonna be so rude. Yep, next button. I'm gonna next. Whatever. You rise for the group. Going forward, we need to buckle down and get serious about our survival. I say we've had it as easy as it's going to get. There's no luck left. We need to be more disciplined and more organized if we want to beat this virus. We can't rely on anything but our own hard work and will to survive. This world isn't going to give us any handouts and we'll never know what might be just around the corner. Okay. Next button. From where you sit in the clearing, you hear a sudden repeating, resonating sound. Something loud at its source and echoing through the trees and diminishing up the hill. Whoa, what is that? Beep, beep, beep. Oh, is a beep sound? Does anyone else hear that or am I losing my mind? James says. Okay. Sounds like a tow truck, Brody says. I thought we couldn't call tow trucks, huh, James? You say with a smirk? Everyone in the clearing rises, turning towards the signal, leaving home at the base of the low southern hill. From the looks of it, a tow truck has backed up to the minibus. Next button. Okay, so 
so we have a tow truck here okay 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 now i get it this is the end of chapter seven now i get it okay so okay apparently part three we have five chapters if like that eight nine ten eleven and twelve you rushed to the bottom of the hill in a secluded area where you assembled your group's vehicles a few days ago. A older man with jet black hair and the mechanics cobbles hooks up your left vehicle to his truck switch. Okay. Looks like you need a tow, he said with a friendly smile. Good thing I found you all, not many people are on the road. I would have thought many tow or tutors ditch and fish would have told you by now. Strange how no one's been calling for service either. None of my regulars are hauling their junk to my yard. Seems like the whole world's at a party and no one invited me. Mm, no way. Your group remains quiet. The man flips a lever in the back of his truck and lifts the front end of the minibus. <laughs> it's like he doesn't know, Madison says. Okay. So what? Sorry, I don't watch much news. My son and daughter got all that internet on their computer, but I don't mess with it. Come to think of it, my newspaper hasn't been delivered in days. I got to remember to take those days off the next invoice. The man flips the lever to lock the winch in place. I'll take the lot of you to my junkyard if you want to wait while I fix her up. I can put one or two with me in my truck. The rest can follow. By the way, name's Eli. Guess you can think of me as your guardian angel. Guardian angel, huh? End of part two button. Alright, okay, 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 okay. Now I get it. So this is the end of part two. Right. So, we are gonna start part three then. Right, what I'm gonna do right now is, um, I'm gonna actually, let me think for a second, um, okay, 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 whatever, okay, I got an idea, so, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to announce that this is the end of chapter 7 anyway, because, um, Last day, I mean yesterday, I did a video and I thought when I continue to reach skill, this is chapter 8. Okay, apparently I got confused. Um, so, my conclusion is chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 is 5 chapter under part 3. So, alright. Um, I'm gonna end this video for now. And I will come back for part 3. Probably tomorrow, cause um, chapter eight is quite okay. If chap if if my assumption is true, chapter eight should not be too much longer. Um, chapter eight, chapter eight, yeah, chapter eight, and then nine. Probably chapter nine. Wait, just give me a few seconds to think about it. Chapter 9 was I go to the BBS Center BBC Research Center. Then chapter chapter 10 I go to the that museum. 11 Scout at the Safe Haven and 12 Silver to Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So chapter 8 should not be too longer. So tomorrow will be two tap tomorrow will be two chapters out. Which is chapter 8 and 9. 9 will also probably be done in only one video. But probably will be longer. So, okay, we'll see. So, 2 chapters will out tomorrow. Which is 8 and 9. So, to, uh, today I'm going to end chapter 7. That's all for today. See you tomorrow. In the next video. I'm going to stop the uh, video and we'll see you tomorrow. Whoa, this noise is making... ah. Uh, Okay, 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 whatever. See you, see you tomorrow. Bye.